You gotta go? Yep. All right. We ready? Start. Great. Good morning, everyone. Thanks very much for joining us for this uh, press conference. We are here, uh, MP Judy Scro and I are here to uh, address the issue of RCMP harassment, the culture of harassment in the RCMP. We're here specifically at this time for a couple of reasons. One is uh, to establish very clearly that we are very, very supportive of the RCMP and to make the point that the RCMP is an icon of Canadian values where men and women should feel safe to work and many of them we understand and we know simply do not. We're here specifically also in response to the presentation at the Senate Committee, Defense Committee last week by Commissioner Paulson. Uh, it was very clear from that presentation, the nature of his presentation, where he singled out a number of subordinates, criticized them in a very, very public forum, that the kind of leadership you need to fix deep cultural problems in the RCMP simply wasn't evident in the kind of presentation that, uh, that Commissioner Paulson made. It was a very stark contrast in the committee last week where we had two retired generals, General Jeff Jeffries and General uh, Leslie, who had been instrumental in fixing similar problems, deep cultural problems in the military. And they made this point very powerfully, said it is all about leadership from the top, it's all about leadership all the time. And what we were left with was the distinct impression that the kind of leadership you need to fix the problems in the RCMP, the cultural problem, just wasn't evident in the presentation made by Mr. Uh, Commissioner Paulson. And a, and, a, and a final point that we'd like to make is that uh, we've made some progress. We've, we're going to have a reasonably good study, I think, and report from the Senate committee. There's been some work on the, on the House of Commons side on this issue. But there has not been a, a concerted, proper effort to hear from victims, from the injured in the RCMP harassment cases. And uh, uh, this is because the conservative side has refused to allow us to call these victims. We think victims need to be heard from. We need to validate their concerns. We need to learn from them. Uh, we need to be able to learn from them to assess the intensity and the breadth of the problem. And so we are, have launched and will continue to undertake roundtables across the country, ulti ultimately a, a national Ottawa summit on the issue to uh, hear from victims and to hear uh, as much other input as we can possibly get to push, force the RCMP into fixing this problem. Uh, thank you, Senator Mitchell. As, uh, as Senator Mitchell indicated, the RCMP is the uh, national force for our country. Uh, and one that we, all of us, I, I suspect all of us, there's not a Canadian around that isn't immensely proud of the symbol of the RCMP. What has happened is there's been very, very serious issues there that have been raised here in the House. We have been holding roundtables and uh, listening to many people across the country and are going to continue to do that. Uh, very serious, serious issues. And uh, Commissioner Paulson's uh, comments last week were, was, were nothing short of bullying and intimidation. Exactly what we're hearing from many members, men and women, about the exploitation and harassment in the RCMP. I think he was guilty of the exact same thing. So if you've got the leader up there bullying people who have uh, issues uh, and, and lawsuits before the government of Canada, and he's treating people that way, it's, what kind of a message did that send to other men and women in the force? Is make sure you don't come forward because you're nothing short of getting publicly smeared by uh, uh, Commissioner Paulson. And uh, to suggest that maybe they have an ability uh, they don't have the ability to move forward and that's why they're launching complaints. Uh, I can only say that uh, we've been listening to the men and women and we know what those complaints are and how seriously they are felt and the amount of people that are off, uh, unable to work because of those harassment complaints and, and the kind of intimidation that is quite uh, significant in the, in the force. So it suggests that uh, you know, they don't have the ambition to move forward and, and realize their dreams in the RCMP is a real slap in the face to the many men and women. It's a re-victimization of many of them and demissive and derogatory, nothing short of that. And uh, I believe the people who have spent years um, getting training and being in the RCMP deserve better. So we're gonna to continue to hold round tables over the summer and we're gonna be looking for solutions uh, to these issues. Uh, we're gonna hold a summit in the fall with some experts uh, some from military and others that have ha seen serious issues like that and been able to turn the culture around. Clearly, Commissioner Paulson is not showing the leadership that's necessary to, to move the force forward. 
uh, the men and women that have called us since last week's uh, presentation at the Senate Committee, any confidence that Commissioner Paulson had from the rank and file uh, clearly appears to have disappeared. So that creates another huge issue is how do you move the RCMP forward and deal with serious issues if you don't have the confidence of the rank and file? And uh, from the comments that I have heard, he clearly doesn't. Uh, so we're going to continue to move forward. Liberals believe in the RCMP as a national institution. Uh, we want to see the men in the RCMP and the women stand and be proud of the organization as we want to be proud of them. And we're going to continue to work forward. We're going to find solutions. It's not going to be just about criticism. We're going to work to see if we can help find those solutions that are necessary to carry the RCMP forward. The, uh, and if Commissioner Paulson is not part of the solution, then I have to question uh, where we're moving forward on, on these issues. But uh, we have lots to do ahead of us, lots of people to talk to, and, uh, and lots of work to do. And uh, I want to applaud uh, Senator Mitchell and the Senate Committee for what they've done in raising these issues and moving forward on them. So we're working forward to the summit uh, that will raise these issues and help us to profile them. Just with respect to uh, Commissioner Paulson, before he moved into his job, uh, there was Commissioner Elliott, a civilian uh, commissioner, uh, and uh, a few years ago, there, there, you know, kind of was, there were quite a few stories done about um, Mr. Elliott, uh, about bullying, perhaps, uh, with, with his behavior, concerns about his behavior. We saw high-ranking uh, former RCMP officers coming forward and speaking out about Elliott. And there kind of was the, the suggestion that maybe if they got one of their guys, someone from inside the force, that maybe things would be a bit different. Um, so, uh, you know, just kind of looking back on the last few years and, and the, the history, do you think that hopes were high when Paulson came in and maybe, uh, you know, is there disappointment there? Well, if I can say that uh, Commissioner Paulson came before the committee and I had raised to him many of these issues of sexual harassment. And, um, you know, I had really great hopes that Commissioner Paulson was going to be the man who understood the issue and I took his commitment as one of intense seriousness that he was going to deal with it. I was quite impressed with his comments and you know the Liberals voted for C42 because we believe that with Commissioner Paulson at the head that it was going to move the force and deal with these many issues. Uh, hence be the reason that I have such profound disappointment in, um, in the kinds of comments that uh, Commissioner Paulson made last week. He's clearly part of the problem. I mean, he, his, his bullying attitude last week to, to treat members of the RCMP who uh, have been out there as victims, whether he likes them or not, has nothing to do with it. He's, he's the equivalent of a deputy minister. He had to show some respect for people who are feeling very harassed and intimidated. Instead, what he did is he re-victimized those people all over again and intimidated many other people who were prepared to come forward, who are now are absolutely terrified of losing their jobs. So. It's, it's, a, it's a profound disappointment from my perspective. I'm sure Senator could, Mitchell would want to add something to that. I could, I could uh, add a bit. Um, certainly, I'm equally uh, disappointed. But there's, there's, it's very instructive to look at what happened in the Canadian military. They had the same kind of problem. And, it, and they went through three chiefs of staff before they found the one who could actually fix the problem. So it's not easy to find the right person. That right person has to make one first step, and that is to understand that this is not an easy problem to fix, and that you're, the victims of this problem, the injured, are not their enemy. They are, in fact, friends of the RCMP, people who, who have been deeply injured but are deeply committed to the RCMP and to, and, and to fixing it. And instead of attacking them, uh, Senator or uh, Commissioner Paulson should embrace the, these victims, bring them in, listen to them, find out what's going on, and it would help him and his senior uh, management, his senior staff, uh, fix the problem. I just wanted to ask uh, uh, Ms. Groh also, um, just, just this week, um, your leader has been calling for accountability measures for, for MPs' expenses. Uh, and I just was wanting to ask you about a few years ago, uh, you know, you, there, there was rejected housing claims uh, from you. Can you just tell us more, you know, what, what happened? Did you do anything wrong and how did you resolve the issue? The issue was dealt with. Uh, an issue was pointed out, and as Liberals, you know what, we show leadership on issues. Uh, I'd like to see the same leadership happening from, uh, from the government. Clearly that's not. Uh, and, and so I have no issue uh, with you asking the question. An issue was raised, pointed out, I immediately dealt with the issue. Um, and uh, I would ask for the Prime Minister and his folks to do the same thing. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.
um, it's unrelated to this, just about Senate transparency. You've been on a committee that's sort of trying to look at this, um, but at the same time, a lot of the stuff that's going on in the upper chamber still, you can get an audio recording, but you can't see anything. Yeah. I mean, where, where's the progress coming here in terms of really um, opening the doors? Of the I'm Senate? not on a committee that's been looking at that, actually, but but I'm very, very much in favor of televising the, uh, the Senate chamber. Uh, we have, the committees are televised. Uh, in fact, um, uh, our default position in our committees is that, they, is that they're open, they're not generally in camera. Uh, and I think there's a real commitment to that. But I, I've, I've had a motion on the, on the order paper, I'm gonna get back to that again, uh, to televise or podcast what goes on in the Senate chamber. I think when people could see the quality of work that goes on in the Senate chamber, they would be very, very impressed by, by the nature of the people, the thoughtfulness, the, the, the speeches that are given. Uh, it's really, it really does remarkable work. At this point, we'd probably see it as a closed-door policy. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I mean, I, I share the concern that we, uh, we, the aud there is audio, but it doesn't even go off the off the Parliament Hill. And so, uh, for a number of years, I've been working on it. Others have as well to try and build the momentum to have our sessions fully televised, and uh, uh, it can be done with podcast very inexpensively, and uh, and people could would stream. People could pick it up on their computers and so on, it would really open up. And I think uh, it would be good for uh, Canadian, the Canadian public has a right to see what we do. Absolutely. And uh, not just the ones that live in Ottawa and can come and sit in the, in the chamber. And, uh, and they would be very, uh, very impressed. And I think very inspired by what goes on in there because some excellent work goes on in there. How soon does that get back up on the order paper? Like when are we putting that ball back in motion? Um, I'm, uh, I probably, now we're at the end of the year, so I'll probably bring the motion back in, uh, in the fall. Um, we need to settle and focus and take a deep breath. And, uh, but I think there is much more uh, momentum to consider uh, that possibility now. Quite encouraged by it. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thanks.